Morning everybody. This morning we're going to be servicing a 2388 Case IH Combine. This is my trusty partner Hoppy here, my three-legged dog. We're going to assisting us on working on the combine today. We're getting ready to crawl up there and check the oil on this combine. And uh, I'll be back with you in just a second. All right, everybody, we got the ladder down on the back of the combine, and we'll get out of the shade here in a minute where you can see better, but we're going to go up here and check the oil on this machine before we start it. We definitely don't want to start one up without any oil in it, so. All right, I'm going to show you a little evidence that we've got critters up here. Well, if that's raccoons, whatever. Another reason we're going to check the oils, make sure we don't have any extra passengers on here like a possum or a raccoon. Go see what's in here. We're looking in the grain tank. We're going to latch the hood here and we'll see if there's a surprise underneath. Something hiss at us. And so far I see nothing little story on this we still here all right so we're getting ready to check the oil i don't see any raccoons that's good news i'm going to check in that radiator area the reason i'm doing that you'd be surprised how many times somebody start a combine up and raccoons like to make a little nest there at their babies right in front of the radiator and when you start it up, it shoots them right into the radiator and costs a lot of money to fix that radiator. All right, here's where we're going to check the oil, okay? I'm going to check the oil and I'll get back to you. All right, so our connection out here in the country to the internet's not very good. So I'm not able to control you guys remotely. Uh, but moving on to our combine project today. First thing I'm going to do is change oil, all right? Uh, because it takes so long to drain the oil out of these things. They hold five gallons and it runs pretty slow. On this combine, there's a drain hose here, okay? And we've, we've already ran the engine, got the oil a little bit warm so it'll run a little faster. We're gonna go up top now and open up the pet cock on the bottom of the oil pan to allow the oil out. You might note that this same hose will let us drain different components like the hydraulic system whatever uh, another real important thing to know is look in your service manual or your operator's manual and know how many gallons capacity or quarts if it may be your engine holds i know this one holds five gallons so this bucket is sufficient the next series newer combines though actually hold seven gallons so i used to work with a young man i won't mention his name but always ran oil out on the floor i'd say son Get two buckets, when it's half full, switch buckets. Well, he never got that through his head, and every time we had a couple gallons of used engine oil on the floor to clean up. So know how much capacity your oil is so you don't make a mess, all right? And then we're going to dispose of this engine oil uh, at a facility that burns used engine oil in their furnace in the wintertime, all right? We always want to dispose of all our petroleum pro products properly. So I'm going to take you up top here. And uh, I'll show you where this pet cock is and we'll get this oil started draining. All right, we're back up on top of our combine again. Earlier I showed you me checking the oil. Okay, I came up the stairs on the back here up the ladder. You always want to be careful because we're pretty high up in the air now. The engine has been running, so... When I get down in here, I got to be careful where I grab. You can see the muffler is right there. Okay. So do not put your hand on that. You will have a burn. And remember the burns. There's first, second, and third degree burns. So we're going to be real careful not to touch that. I'm going to be real careful crawling down in here. I don't fall and break my leg. All right. I'm going to get down in here. And get close and personal with this engine. All right, so I'm going to show you before I grab it. But right there is the pet cock on the oil pan of this engine. 
and I'm going to reach down there and open it up so the oil starts draining, okay? Alright, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but we'll try. You know what, I'm going to shut it off. I don't think it'll work. Alright, so this petcock is now open. It's just simply got a little handle. It's spring-loaded. You push it one way and turn it a quarter turn, and it starts draining. Okay, one thing that will help the oil drain out of your engine quicker is so I go up here where we're going to add the oil back in. I'm going to take this cap off. And it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, if you ever poked a hole in the bottom of a plastic bottle to let it drain faster, this lets air in <clears throat> so it doesn't uh, vapor lock. Would that be the right word? And uh, it'll just drain out a little quicker. That's where we're going to add oil later. I'm going to crawl out of here. I'm going to shut you off so that I don't drop you. All right, everybody, we're getting ready to change the filter. I've already broke it loose, used our oil filter wrench. I'll just demonstrate again how that reaches around there and starts it loose. Once it's broke loose, you can do it by hand. Okay, we're also going to change this water filter. And uh, we'll do that after I get the oil done. There's a couple little valves up here that shuts off the water so it doesn't uh, run out while we got the filter out. But uh, what I'm going to do is take this filter off. And the new filter, this will be something new to you guys. It's uh, always done your cars yourself. So what I do is I fill this oil filter. It's a two quart filter full of oil before I put it back on. And the reason for that is from the oil filter, the oil travels directly to the oil pump. And if there's an air gap in there, there is a possibility that you could lose prime on your oil pump and not lubricate your bearings on your crankshaft, okay? So, old school thing that all the mechanics always do on the bigger diesels with big filters. Take them off, fill them full of oil, and then put them back on. Um, so I've already got the oil back in the crankcase, and as soon as I get the oil in this filter and the new filter on, we'll be ready to start it and make sure it doesn't leak, okay? And I'll also put the hours that's on the machine, the engine hours, so that I'll know when to change it again. I think I only had a little over 100 hours on this, so we're way early. But I like to keep the oil changed more often than not. Uh, I feel that sitting around all winter, it tends to get condensation down in there. So we have a little bit of water residue in the oil. And a new engine for this baby, gosh, I don't know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars time you get it in there. It's a lot cheaper to put oil in it than it is buy a new engine. So we're gonna go ahead and change this filter and put it back on. I'll get back to you here in a minute. Okay guys, I got the oil in the filter. I put some lube around the rubber uh washer or o-ring at the top so it'll seal better. You should do that when you change the oil on your car. What I want to really show you is, look on the side of your filters, really important that it shows you to put oil in there. And also, you just hand tighten this filter, okay? Do not put your wrench back on it and tighten it because filters get tighter as they get hotter and wear and you'll never get that filter off. Well, you will. You'll have to use a chisel and you'll be cussing. But we're going to go hand tight, okay? I got a little bit of oil on my hand, so I can't get a very good grip. So now I'm going to take my rag, and I'm going to give it just a little bit more with my hand. Do not use the wrench. Now then, now that that's done, my engine's in the, in the crankcase. Or my engine's in the crankcase. That was silly. The oil is in the crankcase. Excuse me. And I've checked it, and it's full. We're going to go start this engine and uh, run it for a little bit and come back and see if we've got any leaks and uh, we're going to put the hours on this filter too when we come back and check for leaks okay we'll be right back all right guys i've ran the engine for a little bit i've come back here and looked for leaks around the oil filter didn't find any so i wiped it down i also decided to go ahead and use my label gun let's go around and use it has a sticker on here thinking it'd be easier for you guys to see and also put one of these 
uh, stickers up in the cab on the window where the operator can see how many hours are on the oil change, okay? Um, the water filter, I'm going to look at the manual. I'm thinking that I can go 400 hours at a time without changing that. I've got 117 hours on that one right now. Well, I may change it anyway. It's not real expensive, but I'll check back with you and let you know. Uh, again, check your oil and document everything. And when you start an engine after an oil change, sit there and make sure that oil pressure comes up. If you see that oil pressure not coming up within like 10, 15 seconds, immediately shut the engine off, okay? Not good for an engine to run a fat oil. I don't care if we're talking about a car or a combine. So just uh, always keep an eye on your oil pressure. Talk to you soon.